Well, one more to go here, and it's the men's W1 Open gold medal match. Hegemolyu of Turkey has taken the bronze medal, and Turkey are in with a shout here of taking gold. Guaranteed bronze, guaranteed at least silver, but they're up against a very promising, well, I shouldn't say promising, a very talented Czech Republic athlete. On target number two, representing the Czech Republic. Albersaglio numero due per la Repubblica Ceca, Paralympic champion David Rahoninski. The line judge for the match is Mrs. Manuela Cascio. And shooting first, target number one. So Yeit Aydin from Turkey will shoot first in this gold medal match. There he is. He's going up against the Czech Republic's David Draninski. And this was the match you uh, picked out, Chris. Uh, the last one of uh, this European Championships. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, and it's because of the two archers, isn't it? Uh, is it uh, he, he's had some great results, not particularly individually, but... Uh, won the doubles event at the last Worlds in Dubai, started this year. And, and with Nihat Gmenoglu and, and Bahatin Hegemoglu has, uh, has formed really a core um, for Turkey in the W1 category, particularly on the men's side over the last few years. Uh, and of course, he's up against uh, one of the, the legends of para-archery, David Drahaninski, uh, won the Paralympic Games back in 2008, won the Paralympic Games last year again for the second time uh, in Tokyo. And one of the, the best known faces on the circuit. Eight. Otto. Well, first arrows put down. Nine and eight. Not telling us too much at the moment. Eight. Otto. Nine. Just making some more adjustments there, I didn't. Twenty six set. Six points for Aydin, 28 for Drahoninski, two-point lead after the first end. Well, Chris, you talked about uh, how you capitalize on that first arrow, you have that sighter, and you uh, use it to dial in. Drahoninski, now two tens with his second and third arrow. Yeah, what, what I find fascinating about Drahoninski is, is in the W1 event, you can't use those magnified sights, you can't use those high weights that compound archers do, but David Drahoninski, when he shoots really well, shoots incredible scores. I mean, really, really top-end compound scores, and though they are using compound bows, they are not using the same um, uh, accoutrements. Uh, that allow compound archers to be so accurate and so consistent. Uh, but David, when he's shooting really well, does reach those heights. And he's doing that with a core he can't particularly control. He's got that straps in his chair. And he's got this same kind of, uh, of nuance, like some of the cop, cop, top compound archers, where if they shoot perfectly, they hit the dead center. If they don't shoot perfectly, they're just a little bit out. It's not a group that moves. It's either perfect or not perfect. 
Uh, and that, to me, is the sign of someone who really, really, really is special at this sport. Well, that makes it a tougher challenge for Aydin here of Takia. Training by two after the first. He shoots first in the second and still just trying to find the center of the target. He's not far off. Ten, get you. Some comfort there for yet I didn't. So 52 out of a possible 60, given the impairments is a good score, but could be on for a perfect here. Dronenski. He's dropped into the eight for another 28 20 and a target of 56. So Dronenski came in with a two point lead and he leads after the second end with a four point lead. Iden can't afford to let this one keep drifting away, can it, Chris? No, it's going to be tough if he gives Trahaninsky any more points. He was only the second seed here, Trahaninsky. But he's proved time and time again that in match play, he's super comfortable. And, you know, look at look at those scores so far. Four tens, two eights. The tens are all excellent. This is not compound archery where it's a ten almost guaranteed unless you, uh, you do something wrong and then you just edge it out. You know, they really, as W1s, with those reduced poundage bows, with a lack of magnified sights, in terms of in terms of skill difficulty, in terms of level, it's a, it's a, it's hard to hit the middle. And Drahaninsky does it and shoots this in the same way as many compound archers do. Um, making a mistake doesn't happen often. Aiden's got a level that he needs to reach, and it's better than the level he's shooting right now if he wants a chance at winning this match. Two tough competitors going up against each other. But it's this man from the Czech Republic who's dominating at the moment. We've only had two of the five regulation ends. I didn't already trails by four points. Needs to stop the rot right now. Eight. Otto. See, that was a much straighter shot. The, ver uh, the horizontal alignment was much better. It was also a shot in which he didn't move his backhand uh, dramatically out of, out of line. Uh, and those two things are related. Ten. And you saw then, again, the hand came out to the side a bit more dramatically, and the horizontal alignment is out of whack. He's moved over and to the right. Um, should he have kept that in line, it probably would have been a 10. I didn't still making adjustments. Nine 
Well, 28 in the first, 28 in the second, and that very much looks like 28 in the third. Currently marked as 84. That last arrow will go to a measure, but we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. 84 plays 77 means the six-point lead has opened up to seven, subject to that confirmation of the measure. I mean, yeah. looking at the the points, Chris, it's not uh, it's not a bad score from Aydin, but this is a as you've alluded to, this is a great score from Draninski. Yeah, that was confirmed a ten. It looked like a ten. It was marked a ten on the score sheet, and it's confirmed as a ten by the judge after a look. Uh, but look at, again, another end where he shot tens and an eight, and, and it really is just an indication upgraded. of um, when it goes right, everything point just point goes eight. right, or something's Two. a little bit wrong. His eights aren't consistent. There's not a group of eights out to the right. There's not an inconsistency with his sight. He's not grouping in the wrong place. Everything's set right. And when it goes right, it's in the middle. There must be something. I don't know whether it's the wind or whether it's something with his timing or his um, you know, the way he sets up or, or something with his impairment that causes some of them just to go off every now and again. I, it'd be fascinating to know. Uh, what that causes, but but when things go right, David Draninski is a very tough man to beat, and it's now a big ask over six arrows for Aiden. Three ends down, a seven-point lead for this man. Yet, Aiden of Takia will shoot first in the fourth, and he's got to start drilling them into the middle of the target Ten. Yeah, oh, great stuff that's exactly what he needed not just for his own confidence but to try and put some pressure on the athlete from the czech republic The problem is he needs Draninski to play ball and start dropping some points, but that does not look likely at the moment. Nine. See, that, that looked dead to me. The, the back of his shot looked dead when he let go, and it dropped low. And I wonder if that is the, the, um, the difference. If he smooths through it, if, he, if he's commanding when he releases the shot, I wonder if that's the thing that affects whether Drahaninsky is, is hitting the middle or not. Another one going to a measure, another one that I think is uh, likely to get marked up, but uh, it does mean that uh, Aydin has uh, closed the gap somewhat. A point's a point, and you can't complain about a point, but Aydin needs more than one point to... <laughs> the claw is way back into this one, especially with only three arrows to go. It would surprise me if, if David Draninski shot anything than a 10 or an 8 um, in this match. Uh, maybe 1-9, you know, maybe some of these line calls he's been a little bit lucky on. Um, that one's been marked up again and, and confirmed as a 10. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting comparison between these two archers. Uh, Aydin's getting there. He, he's getting there and he's finding the middle, but it's just taken too long. Um, yeah. uh, when, especially when your opponent's just not hanging anything but 28. And there uh, has been upgraded to a 10. David Rajoninski now with It's all going points on the, the man from the Czech Republic's way. Going into the fifth end. Three arrows each to go and a six-point lead for David 
Dranitsky. Dranitsky, sei punti di vantaggio su Aydin, il turco. Must be tough going into this uh, final end, knowing that uh, well, you've basically got to shoot three tens and hope that your opponent shoots three eights just to give yourself a chance of a shoot off. And uh, when Iden has only shot three tens so far over his twelve arrows, the first part of that job is a pretty tough one. Start of the fifth, Yayet Iden of Turkey, trading by six to shoot first. Nine. Love it. Ten. Ruthless. Absolutely ruthless. Eight, Otto. Jolinski almost a full arrow ahead here. Nine, no bet. Nine. Love it. So finishing on a one, three, two. Dronitsky with one arrow to go, one for one available to him. Eight. Okay. High into the eight, but it's more than enough. And look what it means to him. He shot nine tens out of his 15 arrows. And David Dronitsky is the... 2022 European champion. Brilliant yeah, big win from him. Big win from Drahaninski again. It was a, it was the final that really promised everything. Uh, Paralympic champion versus reigning world champion. Uh, fantastic for David Dranitsky, who has been such a force in this sport for so long uh, and is back as a force of this sport to be back on top of the podium again. Well, confirmation there that David Dranitsky of the Czech Republic has taken the men's W1 Open European title here in 2022 in Italy's capital, Rome.